All right, time once again for another edition of uh, Catching Up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com on Facebook, 1010XL's Facebook page. Of course, stream it on the relevant app, the group messaging app with live interactive podcasts throughout. You've got our channels, you got shows, et cetera, et cetera. Go check out the free download, R-E-L-E-V-N-T. No A at the end. Okay, fresh and hot off the radio uh, Jaguars today. Everybody's talking about it. The schedule, the schedule, the schedule. We go through it. You know, who do you think they're going to win? Do you think they're going to lose? I'm going to not go through it game by game. I'm going to give you an overview uh, of what I think. And again, don't, you know, look, I mean, when I see people out there on social media, you know, 12 and five, I mean, that's a little much. I mean, you're, I don't know. Listen, they've got a stretch in the middle of the year. Uh, Denver in London, come hold of the Raiders. Now the Raiders are iffy now. I'm not saying the Raiders are, you know, but if they play the way on their, on their good days, the Raiders, the Raiders are a good team. You know, Carr is, Sometimes he's really good, and sometimes he's not so good. So we'll see about that. But um, then at Kansas City, and then Baltimore at home. I mean, those, that's that's a brutal. I don't know. So, some people look at it like, man, it's not that hard of a of a schedule. I think it's a hard schedule. I mean, look, you you, you got to play the AFC West, uh, which is very tough. I don't I don't care what anybody says. They're all pretty good if not to very good. Denver's a potential playoff team. San Diego's a potential playoff team. The Raiders are a potential playoff team. Kansas City is a playoff team. Fair? I mean, that's not out of the question. Um, Then you got Baltimore, which is a playoff team. Dallas is a playoff team. You know, Tennessee's a playoff team. Um, And I think you'll beat the Giants. I got you beating Philly, and they're a playoff team. But I, and that's only for thinking that Doug Peterson's going to go back into Philly and beat the Eagles. You know what I mean? It's not because we're a better team. So I do have that as a W. But that very that, that could be that's going to be a tough one on the road at Philly, especially when you just came back from a West Coast trip and you're going to get beat by the Chargers. You know what I mean? Then you got to come back, and then you're going back up. So, you know, that can be a little challenging there. But, uh, look, I we listened to Doug Peterson. If you didn't hear it, uh, I'll give you the rundown. Um, the bye week, they chose to move the bye week to later in the year instead of right after the London game. His reasoning was through his experience and the research they did, the, the way home's not that bad. Like, you can recover in time for that next Sunday. So he would prefer, since it's an 18-week season, having that bye week. I think it comes in at week 10. Uh, Let's see, three, yeah, week 10, because there's seven more games after that. So that was the reasoning there. I'm okay with that. I've never been on a London trip, but I'll take his word for it. You know, that it's the the, the coming back home isn't as bad uh, for the recovery uh, aspect. So he did say that. Uh, talk. They did. Uh, me O'Brien. Great question about the uh, injuries. Where they're at. Uh, sounds like uh, ETN's looking pretty good. Okay. Now that doesn't mean anything yet, but he's out there. He's moving around. He's doing some things. J. Rob. They got to wait with the Achilles. So he's iffy right now. Fair. Uh, he is. Um, and then Agnew looks pretty good too. So right now, I I feel, just from hearing Doug, I I feel pretty good that ETN's going to be okay. Maybe not 100% week one, but he'll he'll be ready to go, it seems like, week one. I think Agnew's the same boat. I think Rashawn Jenkins is in the same boat. Uh, J-Rob, we'll see. You know, maybe we don't, maybe we can hold down the fort and let him get fully healthy with Snoop or whoever, maybe... Maybe Trey Smith, Jimmy Smith's son, getting a shot in the rookie mini camp trout. How cool is that? Now, one side you'd be like, man, you guys are old. <laughs> and we are. But the other side is like, holy cow, man, I can't believe one of our kids is gonna try out for the team. You know, that's so awesome. I hope, I hope Trey makes it. Look, it's it's tough being a rookie. Uh, just for a tryout. This is a tryout. He's not under contract. He's trying to get under contract. I've been there before. It's 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 tough, man. But hopefully he can impress enough to to be okay there. But it sounds like from a, a health standpoint, we're getting there. You know, look, you could you could look at 
Uh, and it's just rookies for the, and you guys probably know that, but just rookies. Uh, you get to see him move around. I thought Dempsey made a great comment. He's like, "Look, I want to see how Doug does things, and so do I. Like, how does he run the ship? You know, what? We'll, well, let's see the culture right away. You know, we listen to the press. I mean, oh my gosh, some, you know, coming from Philly to Jayville must be interesting. With some of the questions, some of them were great. You have to ask him, right? And then some, like, I forget who was. He's like, "How do you feel out there, Doug?" He's like. <laughs> He's like, you ever been out there on the field a long time? Doug's like, well, I was out there yesterday, actually. You know, well, how does it feel? He's like, it feels great. They're like, just kind of, hey, hey, Doug, how's your mom doing? She happy you're here? You know, how's <laughs> your family? And they ha- I mean, I don't know. It's just funny. But nonetheless, he, uh, he had to do that. And now they're on the field. And uh, you can catch your reports, of course, all throughout the day on 1010XL. But look, you could look at this team. Um, I'm looking at it. Look, for the record, two years ago I had them at eight and eight. They were one and fifteen. Ooh, yeah. Two years ago, yeah, yeah. That was like last the year. I was like, world. okay, I'm not going to be that like because you you get carried away with the emotion. You're like, yeah, we could beat that. Yeah, like Philly. Philly is such a emo like more. It's more than just X's and O's. I could be totally wrong, right? I'm not saying that we're a better team than Philly. I'm saying that Doug Peterson is going to go back up to Philly and kick their ass is what I'm saying. Why? Just because. You know what I mean? That's how I – like, that's why I'm picking him. Like, yeah, he's going back. His team will be gelling by then. Look, here's the issue. People thinking Washington's a slam dunk win. Here's the issue. You've got a new team, new players all across the board for the most part. you got a new coach – instilling everything new and you expect them to be running and gunning and gelling week one that's tough that's especially today when you got one practice a day it can't be that physical you can only hit so much now granted they get an extra few days and an extra game that can help there's no doubt with evaluating your team i just feel like it's going to be tough for this team to be ready and gelling and playing together week one. And now, I have them winning week two against Indy. I told you I wouldn't go through it one for one, and I'm not going to. But I have them winning at Indy. But you know what? That's a game, too. You got to, you know, it, it, sometimes I'll tell you this. I'll give up a W early in the year as long as I can trade that loss later in the year for a W, right? If they start off slow, one and three. Some guys on 10-10 have them going 5-1. and one. They're out of their minds. It's not happening. I mean, I, that would be – I mean, I could it? Maybe. All right. Can Washington be a victory? Sure. Yes. I got Indy victory. Chargers? You're not beating the Chargers. Philly? Eh. Houston? Eh. Don't give me – remember last year we are going to sweep Houston? Houston kicked the crap out of us both times. Okay, they're not that I – think, I think when you look at Houston, realistically, Jaguars and Houston – you know what? They're going to be a game or two apart when it's all said and done. I bet you. You know the last time the Jaguars beat Houston? Uh, first of all, I know like last year they were, I think going to that first game, 4-17 and 17 against Houston. So now they're 4-19. and 19. So there's no... They haven't look, beaten them since 17. Yeah. Which is like, you're like, what? They're not even our rival. No. Like it's not Tennessee. We're closer in one loss against Tennessee than we are against Houston. So, but I think by then they'll be running. I do. I think by week five. Hey, I got them three two, uh, three and two after week five. I mean, I don't know. It could it could go the other way. They could, but uh, we'll see. You know, they start today. Get the rookies out there. Uh, but you, if you looked at, you know, the what ifs, there there are plenty. You know, it, it's funny. Cam Robinson signs his new deal, and half you think he's got better because of that. I mean, he's going to be better because I hope he's better. He's not bad. We've always said that, but he's not great either. So when you think of like Chase Young, you know, you think of uh, the new kid, Thibodeau. How's he going to do? Hutchinson. I think he's going to crush Hutchinson, in my opinion. I do. I think Cam will bury Hutchinson. Um, you know, other team, you got Bosa. And Khalil Mack, um, you know, Dallas, I, I mean, every team's got their their rush. You know what I mean? Like, that's an if. What if Trevor doesn't take the next step? Everyone's like, no, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Well, there's a chance he might not. 
He's got to get better at his mechanics. He's got to beat the game plan. Now they game plan him. Now they know his weakness. Now they know, like, what, how to attack him, right? What am I doing? I'm keeping him in the pocket. I don't want him outside the pocket at all, right? And I'm going to try to confuse him, and I'm going to try to, you know, disguise. He's a smart guy. He's also a young guy. He hasn't seen it all either. And we've seen rookie QBs and what happens at next year. Now, if he makes a transition like Josh Allen with the Bills, great, 20-8. and eight. Fantastic. <laughs> but if you remember, you look at a guy like Mayfield, lit the world on fire that first year, set a record for touchdowns. Next year, struggled mightily. Third year, eh, not p- bad, not great, somewhere in, in the middle. Now look at him. He wants out. I mean, think about that. They upgraded their number one pick. And he was the number one pick. What he something like that? Yeah, he was number one overall. It's not gonna happen here. I'm not saying that, but that those scenarios could happen. The other scenarios, you could be a Justin Herbert who f- breaks the record his rookie year and then follows it up with another phenomenal year his second year. You know what I mean? So w- which which one are we gonna get? I know as a fan, you're gonna say we're gonna get the you know the Herbert. Maybe he will. I hope we do. But he's got to improve big time. That's another what if. Okay, what if the backs don't come back healthy enough? What if? What if ETN doesn't come back healthy enough to where he's really a difference maker? I hope it's. I hope he is, but what if he doesn't, right? What if Ingram doesn't turn out to be who we think? I mean, we got people thinking he's going to have 10 touchdowns. He's going to lead the team. When's he ever done that? You know what I mean? And we and, and granted, it's Peterson, so I'm, I'm a, they used a tight end, and it, we never used a tight end. I don't know why we never used a tight end. It was crazy. Had Mercedes Lewis here for so many years, and he never fully utilized him. It was just nuts. But, and, and look, you could do that with other teams. You know, say what if, but like Matt, 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 uh, Matt Hayes said in the, the crosstalk, he's like, well, yeah, other teams have what ifs, but if their what ifs work out, they're going 12 and 5, 13 and 4. Our what ifs work out. We're going seven and ten. That's a big, you know what I mean. So I'm more on the optimistic side, but I'm trying to keep it real too. Um, and again, anything can happen in the National Football League. Momentum's huge. How you're playing, staying healthy, is huge. Hey, things. Hey, here's the ups. Here's the here's the ceiling. I guess I'm talking floor, aren't I? Here's the ceiling. <laughs> Everybody rocks, and they're at the top of their game, and they get off to a great start, and momentum hits. And you know what? When they get in that stretch with Denver and Vegas and and Kansas City, Baltimore, they go two and two, right? I got them on four. They, who knows? Maybe that 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 could happen. You finish strong. Can you not beat the Jets? Can you not beat at Houston? Can you not beat Tennessee at home in the last game of the year? You can. I think you can, especially. If my defense is what it's supposed to be, and what is it built to do now? Shut down Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor and whoever Houston has as their back. That's it. How many yards did we give up? Five over 200-yard games on the ground last year, right? That's an if. What if they don't play together? What if they're not that good? What if Walker's a bust? Again, what's the what's the what's the upside? Walker's a beast. Everybody they brought in on defense is unbelievable. And they they they're a top five defense. Sure. Yeah. Down. But this sounds great. It does. <laughs> That's phenomenal. You, I mean, again, if they finish seven and ten with beating the Tez, I got them going the last three, they're two and one. I got them losing to Houston at home. I split the, the division for the record. Nobody swept anybody. Like, nobody swept the Jags, and we didn't sweep anybody. It's a tough call. I, I went conservative on that route for the record. So our, our AFC South divisional opponents, We're pretty I went, good at I getting split. swept. Yeah. I, what's that? We're pretty good at getting swept. Well, Houston. Historically. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> and Houston sweeps us. They did every, every freaking year they I sweep know. us. I am, I am what they so, call... What they I am what they might call a negative Nancy. Yeah. Looking at the schedule. Yeah. My problem is I think a lot of people when they look at the Jaguars schedule is yeah. every game the Jaguars could win. Yeah. They put that's a W. Right. 
There's right. there's seven to eight games I think the Jaguars could win. Yeah. I don't think they're going to win all eight of those games. Right. Does that make sense? It does. I have them winning four games. Wow. Because, I, like, I just... Okay, I'm just going to say this. If they only win four games, that's a fail in my in the first year fail. of Doug P- Peterson's tenure. Yeah, I would agree. And I'm putting it on him. He doesn't get a free year. I totally opinion. agree. Yeah, You're not getting a free year. I'm not expecting you to win this. I got you 7 and 10. If you end up 7 and 10, I'm happy as a clam. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, great. Right. right. You went from 3 and 14 to 7 and 10. Ooh, what's next year going right. to be? Right. Right. We're gonna get ten wins next. You know the year. Right. You know what I mean. And you. So if you go four, man, I'm gonna be like, oh gosh, here you, we go again. Groundhog Day. Right. You're you're drafting in top three. Yep. Again. The way. Thanks, the, Gramp. <laughs> Where's the liquor? I know. The way. <laughs> Down my sorrows. The way you just like looked at the schedule yep. is I like the way you do. I think that's better than I. I get annoyed with like going through. You know. This is a W. This is an L. This is a W. This is an L. I think the better way to look at anybody's schedule when you look at, you know, yeah. how many how many wins losses is to look at, okay, in this group of five teams you play yeah. that last year weren't that good, how many wins do you see in that kind of group? Yeah. Like you you'll probably win two of those, you'll probably drop three. So, something like that. Yep. And that, that's how I do it. Like I like to do it in college football too, but it's just like why, why do I look at the Texans and say dub dub? No, they I don't just, win those no, games. You can't. If you're if you think we're sweeping the Texans, that's that's drinking the Kool Aid. I right. mean, could they? Yeah, they could maybe, but I don't see that happening. I, I this is how I did it, right? Um, I went through, I wrote them all down, and then I said who I think they're going to like automatic loss. Like Kansas City's a loss. You're not beating Kansas City. I don't care how well you're playing or not. I don't think you're beating Baltimore. It could be a tight game, physical game. We might see some glimpses of greatness. But the Chargers in L.A. Not, you're not beating the Chargers no in chance. L.A. Um, you're not uh, – I, I don't think you're beating Denver and London. I know we've been successful in London, but I think with Russell Wilson and coming, I think – here's the thing about the – if you look at the AFC West, and I said it, like they're mostly playoff, at least playoff contenders or playoff teams. Now, granted, anything can happen. Uh, but then there are victories. Where, look, I think they beat the Jets. I do. I think we're better than Jets. I think we beat Detroit. You know, I think we split. And then, and then by the way, then I went with the split. And then I filled in who I think the victory. I think we beat the Giants. I feel comfortable saying we'll beat uh, the Giants. Th- that was one of my wins. Giants aren't that I think impressive. Beat, we should and that them. game's here, too. What's that? That game's here. Yeah, it's home. Yeah, too. they, they so should that, win that game. That should be a good victory, you know? Um, so again, if they finish that, uh, that's fantastic. And we'll all be happy. I know I will be, especially if they finish strong. It, look again, it's tough. I know how tough it is when you got all your players back to be ready week one without making mistakes, without mental errors, without not running the wrong route, without, you know, and I'm talking a team that's been together for a year or two, you know, we might add a pieces here and there, but you know, you, it, you, it takes time to gel. Sometimes you gel in the preseason. You're ready. There's no doubt. It can happen. But it's tough for a new coach with all these new players. And they're all new to him. And they're all new to the team, most of them or a lot of them, to be ready and gel in week one. That's going to be a tall – so I almost feel – and I, you know, and here's a, a, a question I had for the boys last night on In the Huddle on the relevant app um, with Sean and, and Randy and, and Glenn and, those, and Ryan. Uh, and I asked, I said, you know – when you look at this long schedule, are some teams, because they know they're not going to be ready. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Doug P. He'll never say it publicly, but Doug said, they're going, okay, listen, we're not, we might not be ready week one to, to win a ball game. Maybe ready to take the field, but not win a ball game. You know what I mean? It's a strategy, hey, it's maybe Washington's just another preseason game for us. Like, we're still building we're still working right and then which i'm okay with because why because you got all these games to go right now you can't drop games you're supposed to win like you drop the giants midway through the year that that's terrible you shouldn't drop the giants in the uh in the middle of the year i think you beat indy at home i think it's tough for indy to beat us here at home and i think we're going to win at home i do i think we're going to stop jonathan taylor I think their D line is going to be our D line is going to be really good, but 
So is that part of the strategy? Because because again, if you start off slow, one and two, zero oh and three, but you finish strong, seven and ten, eight and nine, six and eleven, right? I would I would prefer that than being you know four and three and then dropping the next you know one out of or dropping the next six out of you know eight something like that. I want them to finish strong. Is my point. And that'll show some momentum going into the next year, right? Not one game like, you know, beating Indy after you lost a lot of other games. I'm talking being there, you know, middle of the pack. I don't want to draft top five. I want to draft top 10, maybe, top 15. We'll still get a great player to add to a team that's on the rise. That's what I want after 2022, that the rhetoric nationally is this team is on the rise. You can see it. I believe they are, but they get you got to show it. Will they? Remains to be seen. I just want to be in late November, early December, and still making when I watch other games. Yeah, I still want to see the Jaguars logo on the in the in hunt. The hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want. I think that's fair, and and then we'll see how it shakes down at the end. Because they put like there. seven teams in those in the hunt. No, thing. they do. If yeah. you're like mathematically alive, you're right. going to be in. You the, can in be the four hunt and thing. seven in in that hunt. Right. There's no doubt right. about that. But hey, it's an exciting time. I tell you, as a player, you look at the national games because you're on national TV and all your friends get to see it. Other than that, I never really paid attention. <laughs> You know, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, and, I, and I didn't have a family. It might be different than the family. Like, you may, you know, you may be sitting there with your wife, you know, if you're a Jag player and you're you're married, right? You're like, all right, honey, why don't you go to this game? Or, honey, I really like to go to this game. You know, that I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, you know, if my buddies wanted to meet me in a, in a city, they would come down to see us. That was, they just did it, you know. Okay, see, hey, Tom, we're coming to Cincinnati. All right, awesome. I'll see you up there, you know. <laughs> Whatever, that'll be fun. Yeah, I see it for like 30 minutes, but whatever, we'll have a good time. Um, you know, so maybe that. Fans get excited because what do you do? You do this. You you do what we, you know, what what are they going to be? I like, Fans, I love you. 12 and 5, baby. Wouldn't that be freaking phenomenal? 12 and 5. <laughs> That's why the NFL makes it this I want to know where big. the 12's coming from. I, I, you know. That's why the NFL Network makes it this big show. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, draft is. is over. Yeah. Our, uh, the last thing we can hype up is right. over. Right. We've still got a while until right. training camp and that. Okay. I don't think also that we start doing what on these games? What? Gambling. Oh, of course. Like, get those. I mean, they're already, oh, the odds the odds are already are going, there. Right? I mean, they're there already. Like, come on. That's, don't think that for a minute. That's not some nice. I'm, I'm still betting on the NBA playoffs right now. So. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I haven't watched a lot. I watched hockey the other night. Man, it was it Dude, was playoff awesome. hockey's freaking awesome. Oh, did Love you see the special hockey. before? Oh, it was it was uh, it was Toronto and Tampa Bay, and man, they were going at. But they had a special on about uh, this um, the dentist for the NHL uh-uh. past thirty years, and oh, so he really? had all these different players, and they were using all these examples. And one guy, and I can't, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. He's got three rings, though. During his 13 year career, something like that, 12, 13 years, he lost like 14 teeth <laughs> and didn't fix them. Like he's like, a, and now he's got the nice chiclets and everything. Yeah. Like, but think about that. Lose it. He's like, but I got three rings. <laughs> like, that's wild. They had, that's they had, awesome. a, uh, they had a, a, a little video guy he took it puck right to the mouth just shattered like everything and they had to go in there and, and you're expect they were saying like hey you lose a tooth you know you break your jaw might be you know it's different but losing a tooth you're coming back like you, that, that that's not like okay we'll see you go get it fixed we'll see you in about a week no that's it's just like, like whatever all right put it in a little baggie we'll save it for you later <laughs> get your <laughs> ass back out there Here we, and they want it right Stitch it up. Who cares? No big deal. But 13, 14 teeth. Dude, hockey that sacrifice, guys sacrifice, baby. Hockey guys are crazy. They man. are crazy. They're I love nuts. Them. I love them. And, hey, hey, uh, Jacksonville Iceman, nice run, baby. Nice run. I know we talk football here, but I, I love hockey. And that, and that was a good run. It's, hey, man, something to build upon. 
Something to build upon. I got a young coach, and and the crowds were incredible. We didn't get out there this year, but man, I know they're incredible. I got out they there were for rocking. a couple games. Yeah, it's dude, fun. Iceman games are awesome. Good man. fun, man. Some of the most fun you can have in Jacksonville. Yeah, I got to get out. I got to take advantage. I interviewed, by the way, yesterday in the horse's mouth. I'll wrap up here. I interviewed Mark Lamping. Uh, he sat at my bar. That was nice. really cool. We nice. actually uh, uh, also put it on on relevant. And look, things are looking good. They're looking good. All the development. He doesn't handle all the. He's. I said, you don't handle GM and all. He's like, Shad may ask me to sit in on an interview. He's like, but I have nothing to do with coaching hires, GM hires. I have everything to do with the business side of things. And man, with everything going on, it's it's fantastic. I also interviewed Mayor Curry, talking about the new stadium. And I said to him, I said, you know, one thing about downtown, it's going to get right. By the way, the four seasons passed right from the city council. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean that. We have the facilities and we have the teams. You got the the Jags, you got the shrimp, you got the ice when you got the shark. I mean, it's a nice nucleus right there. And now we're gonna build around it. I'm telling you, when that's done, that's gonna be phenomenal. It that's gonna boost boost our city through the roof. And then they gotta connect it. And by the way, the mayor agreed. You gotta connect all that the sports area all the way down Bay Street. Uh there's gonna be a new um uh, at the landing, most of it green space, but they are putting a high-rise tower in there for residential. It'll look great, man. Our city, downtown. Hey, we know the burbs, which we can call them the burbs, right? Whether it's, you know, Avalon or OP or, you know, out at the beach or wherever south, wherever you live, right? Uh, those are phenomenal. We have some of the best. I mean, I wouldn't trade where I live. I really wouldn't for anywhere. I live in Neptune Beach in a nice little bungalow, four blocks, not even on the water near the I mean, four blocks from the water. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want. I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't. I don't want to be anywhere else. But you are. Much. You are a living example of what Jaguar fans want Jaguar players to be. Like yeah. come, come to Jacksonville yep. from and somewhere stay. else. Yeah. And love it here. Yeah. Start start the fam. Totally. Live at the beach. Love it. Yeah. That's, I do love it. I do it. I do. And the people are great. They've always been very very great and and uh, for the most part, you know, very gracious and open arms and have welcomed this Yankee. And I even married one of your Southern girls, man. You still like me. <laughs> My real Southern friends hate when I bring that up because they'll call me a Yankee. I'm like, man, that must piss you off because I married one of your Southern bells. <laughs> well, I, I think it's I think it's cool because, That's like, right. if, if someone, like, makes a home, like, I, I want every Jaguar player ever to make their home here. Lot do. But if someone does do. it and they're, like, from Florida, then it's like, okay, like that. You know, that makes sense. You understand but, like, that. When you're from like way up north, yeah. like it would have been so easy after after retirement for you to be like, I'm I'm gonna head back up yeah, to totally what's familiar to me where I grew up. Absolutely. But you wanted to be here. Yeah. You're absolutely. like, I've spent time here. I know what it's like. This is where I want to be. Yeah. No, I love I mean, my wife was from here too, and she didn't really want to move. But if we had to move, she would have moved. If I said, Babe, right. we gotta go back to Boston. I just got to. That's where a huge network of mine is in the business world. But I didn't. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to stay here and built it here. You know, and uh, and be a part of this community, and I love this community. So, I hope they, I think they love me back for the most part. So it's good stuff, man. All right, peace and love out there. Hope you had a great time listening. Good luck to your Jags. Good luck to all your teams out there. Make sure you check out the relevant app for all your favorite teams through our Pro Sports Fanatics collection in the NBA, NHL, MLB, uh, NFL, of course, all throughout. Just go click on that Fanatics vibe channel, like the Jaguar channel. You'll hear me and uh, Dalton D, US, UCF Jaguar. We do a show. Uh, Jordan Dulugo is coming over from Gen Jag. He's going to be doing a show. We've got Men in Teal. They're a podcast. They're doing a show. Big Cat Chat. So we're building this channel. So come be a part of it. All Jag-related type content and interacting with like-minded fans like yourself. All right, that'll do it for us this time around. Until next time, stay safe out there. Be cool. We'll see you right here and catch it up with Tommy Mack on 1010XL's podcast platform, 1010XL.com, on Facebook. Have a great day, Facebook. And, of course, streaming on the relevant app. Check it out. Free download at the Apple Store and on Google Play. Until next time, stay safe and be cool. We'll see you right here on The Horse's Mouth. Peace.